This video is sponsored by iFixit. I paid $220 for this box of 11 broken DualShock 4 PS4 controllers. Let's see if I can fix them. So first things first, let's get them unboxed. There we go. Now that we have them unboxed, let's take a look and see if we can figure out what's wrong with them and then see if I can fix them. Now, some of you have probably already counted these and realized there's only 10. That's because I've already pillaged parts off of this PS4 controller for my Copper Edition PS4 controller repair video that you might have already seen. If not, I'll put a link down in the description so you can check that out when you're done with this one. So let's take a quick look at each of these controllers and see what condition they're in. This one is missing the cap for the thumbstick, but I'm guessing there's probably more wrong with it than that. It's fairly worn, but really not too bad. Could be a lot worse. It'll look a lot better once we get this cleaned up. And we have a red controller. Nothing obviously wrong from the outside. This one actually looks in pretty good condition. Thumbstick is fairly worn, but other than that, not too bad. So that's the condition of these DualShock 4 controllers. There's a few that really aren't in too bad a condition. There's a few that are pretty worn and several in between. Now it's time to actually test them, figure out what all's wrong with them, and then we'll get to the repairs. So there are about two of these that I couldn't find any problems so far. I'm going to check the batteries as they could be faulty batteries. I'll hook those up to a charge meter and see what the charge amperage is. I found several that had analog stick problems as I would guess. And then I found several that won't connect at all and have absolutely no power. And then this top red one is the one I stole the mid frame out of. So I'll need to get another mid frame for that. And then we can test that one and see what's wrong. Now that I've found what I think are most of the problems with them, it's time for everyone's favorite part. Let's take them apart. As with almost all of my repairs on this channel, I'm going to be using the iFixit ProTech Toolkit to remove all the screws out of these PS4 controllers and fully disassemble them. The iFixit ProTech Toolkit comes with all the tools you see here and has pretty much everything you might need to take apart basically any device. iFixit is offering my viewers $10 off when you spend $50 or more. Just go to iFixit.com slash TronixFix. For controller number one, I actually didn't find any problems with, so that's a great start. We have our first controller that is working great. We're gonna move on to number two. So number two, we have a charge port problem. It is loose and the cable will sometimes connect, but then also disconnect right afterwards. So it looks like this one has a charge port problem. I'm going to be using this iFixit driver with a PH00 bit. That'll get out these four screws on the bottom of the controller and then I'll pry it apart with my fingers and tear it apart until we get down to the charge port. Now I just need to clear off my workbench so I've got a good place to work. There we go. Now we can get this one apart. And here's a look at the faulty charge port. You can see there's a little bit of a gap right here on this metal. That actually causes this metal to spread out just enough so when you plug the cable in, it causes it to be loose right here and then that causes the faulty connection. So the easiest way to fix that is just replace this whole charge board. So I'll do that on this one and then we'll get to the next repair. So unfortunately, I found out I ran out of the little charge boards for the PS4 controllers. So I have those ordered. We're gonna move on to number eight that has both bad analog sticks. Based on the comments of my other PS4 controller repair videos, I know this is a huge problem and something many of you guys wanna see how to do. So I'm gonna show this one in depth. So let's get these two replaced and I'll show you exactly how to do it. So the first thing you gotta do is just remove all the screws, obviously and disassemble basically the entire controller so you can get the motherboard out. And then once the motherboard's out, then you can replace the analog sticks. 
Now I'm gonna remove these cables for the rumble motors just so I can totally remove this motherboard out of the rest of the controller. That will help me avoid the situation where I had in my copper controller video where I accidentally put too much heat on the midframe and totally melted it. Now, theoretically, you could probably do this without doing that, but I'm gonna be safe and just remove these cables so I can pull this motherboard completely out and away from the frame. Now with those wires removed, we have just the motherboard left. So these two are the analog sticks, and the problem with replacing these is there are so many solder connections under here. There are several ways you can remove these solder joints. One is you can use a solder sucker and solder wick. Another is with hot air. I'm gonna be using the hot air method, and this will make it so I can pop out the analog sticks, pop the new one in, and then redo any soldering that needs to be done. Then move on to do the other one, and it shouldn't take too long that way. I will need to put some heat resistant tape on these plastic connectors so those don't melt. And then I'll be using some solder flux to put on all the joints and that will help the solder flow. Now I have all the plastic pieces taped off, all the heat sensitive parts. Now I'm gonna put this into my Omnivice, then I'll be ready to remove the analog sticks. Okay, and here we go. Thumb sticks are on, they're nice and straight. They feel good. But now I gotta test them and see if they actually work how they should. So I'm just using the Windows 10 wireless controller properties test, which is an easy test in any Windows 10 machine. And you can see that everything is real nice and steady. I am gonna have to take a look at the L2 as the L2 is constantly on. It shows on number seven here, it shows that it's constantly being pressed. So I'll have to look at that next, but the problem with the analog sticks seems to be fixed. So I think I see what probably is the problem. You can see right here some of the flux or maybe some of the extra plastic that melted from when I took that uh, analog stick out. I think maybe it got on the contacts here. So that's probably causing a bad contact. So I'm going to go ahead and clean that off and then clean off also the contacts over here. Then we'll put it back together and I think it'll probably work for us after that. And there we go. That problem is taken care of. So this red one, number eight is fixed. Let's move on to the next controller. And the gold number 10 seems to have a problem with both analog sticks. I'm gonna plug it in and just verify that then we'll get those replaced if that's indeed what it is. 
And as you can hopefully see, the little plus button is constantly moving. So are these two lines, which means both of these analog sticks are not working correctly. Since both of the analog sticks on this DualShock 4 are drifting, I'm gonna get them replaced. Then I'll get it plugged back in and make sure that that was the only problem. And there we go, the analog sticks are showing nice and steady. All the other buttons on this DualShock 4 are working normally. So number 10 is now fixed. It's time to move on to the next controller. Let's take a look at number seven next. This one will not connect, so there's no power. So need to get this one apart and then we'll have a look and see what's causing the no power issue. Okay, well, so this ribbon cable is disconnected, both rumble motors are disconnected, and the battery itself is also disconnected. So let's have a look at this thing and see if we can figure out what all is going on here. So maybe somebody was going to replace this thumbstick, maybe? About all I can do is just put this thing all back together and then I can actually test it. So it looks like they were definitely trying to repair this analog stick as it does not work correctly. So that's what we need to do on this one. Other than that, everything else seems to work fine. So I'm gonna get this analog stick replaced, then we'll test it again and see if that fixed our problem. And if you see here, it goes around all the way and it doesn't drift anywhere, and it has a full range of motion. So number eight is now fixed. Are you tired of watching me fix analog sticks yet? It's something a lot of you guys requested, so I hope this is helping you out. Let's move on to the next controller. So number four also won't connect. Let's see if somebody took it apart and tried to fix it like they did with the previous controller. I've already taken the screws out, so now I just have to get it apart. And what do you know, somebody fixed it until it was for sure broken. Rumble motors disconnected, not even the correct battery. So I got to get a good battery in here. Then we can plug it in and see if it works after that. This battery has the correct connector. I'm going to plug that in. Then we can put this back cover on Then I'll plug it in and see if it works. Okay, close enough. Now let's see what happens when I turn, try to turn it on. Oh, there we go. And no surprise here, it's got analog stick issues. I don't see any other problems. All the other buttons seem to be working fine. So I'm gonna replace these off camera cause I can't imagine you guys wanna see that again. So I'm gonna get these done and then we'll move on to the next controller. So number six also won't connect. What do you bet there's a bunch of stuff disconnected inside here. Let's take it apart and find out. I already have the screws out to make it quicker. Okay, so far everything actually is in there just fine. Uh, let's check this. There we go, that's the problem. So if you look here, this charge port is very, very loose. So that's the problem with this one. I'm gonna take the charge port out Let's see if we can fix it first, and if not, then we'll have to replace it. So if we look closely here, the port itself is actually fine. There were just no screws holding the board onto the controller. So I'm actually going to use this and then plug it back onto the motherboard and see if we get any power. So here we go. Definitely no power. And no light either. This 
This ribbon cable, I think, actually was plugged in upside down. Let's try it like this. <laughs> there we go. Oh, there we go. Okay, so this one, the only problem was that the ribbon cable was plugged in upside down. So with that plugged in now, it comes up on the screen like it should. And I don't actually see any problems with the buttons. I'll test them all again just to be sure. And here is number six. It is looking and feeling great. It's actually in very good condition, practically new. There's a few, you know, it, it could use a cleaning and there's a few uh, scratches and scuffs on it. But overall, it's in really good condition and it is working great. I'm guessing somebody tried to replace the charge board on this one and obviously fix it until it was broken. Must have been watching too many of my videos. So here we are with number five. It has a left analog stick problem and I've marked it as no LED, but as you can see, the LED works fine. So I just mismarked this one. I'm gonna get the analog stick replaced on this one off camera. So we'll move on to the next controller. And the camo controller number nine actually has no problems found. So we don't have to do anything to this one. It's ready to go. Now let's take a look at number three. Number three has no charge light, bad analog sticks. And this one actually just, it's just the stick caps. The analog sticks themselves are fine, but there are no other problems found. So let's check out the charge light and see what's going on. So here we go. Let's make sure the ribbon cable is plugged in correctly. This one is all plugged in how it should be. So let's take a look at the charge board, see if we can figure out what's going on with that. I'm also gonna take this motherboard out and replace those analog stick caps. Then we'll take a look at that charge port. Okay, analog stick caps replaced. Let's check out the charge board. So I'm gonna do this the easy way. I have a known good charge board right here. So I'm gonna plug this all in to the controller. That'll tell us real quick if that charge board is bad or not. Okay, now I'll press the button and see if it lights up. And it does not. Okay, it does connect to my computer. Oh, we had one flash. Let's try a new battery, see where that gets us. So now with the battery that we know is good, let's check the light on the charge board. And there we go. So the original charge board is most likely fine. I'm gonna put this back together and then we'll get that battery all charged up. And let's just test the light with the original controller's charge board. And it's all working just fine. Okay, so now I'm gonna get number three put back together. Now let's take a look at number 11. This is the one that I pillaged the mid-frame for a different video. And I still don't have a mid-frame, but I think we can test it enough to figure out if there's any problems with it. So I'm gonna plug the battery in, then we'll plug in the light on the controller. There we go. And we'll plug it into my computer so we can test it. Okay, we have a charge light and it is now up here on the screen. And, and number 11 has faulty analog sticks as you can see right here. So I'll replace those off camera. Let's move on to number two, the one that needed the charge board. So controller number two, if you remember from the beginning of the video, needs a new charge port. So I'm gonna get that replaced now. Now with that charge board replaced, you can plug it all back in and hopefully it's gonna work how it should now. And number two, the cable goes in nice and tight on that charge port, so number two is now finished. Oops, except for these. I still gotta replace the thumbstick caps. Now that these are all fixed, they're ready for a second life. Thank you again to iFixit for sponsoring this video. Thank you for watching, and I hope you have a good one.